Hello and welcome to The Big Picture. I'm Vishan Russell and today we are asking, has India won the war on inflation? We ask this because uh, both the consumer price index and the wholesale price index have seen huge declines. In fact, the WPI touching a near zero level percent. Now, this is one of the largest declines India has ever witnessed and this has led to calls for a rate cut by the Reserve Bank. Now, we'll be discussing the causes for the decline in inflation and should the Reserve Bank cut rates over the next half hour with experts who've been really keeping a keen eye on the inflationary trends and who more, though, more so than Santosh Mehrotra, Professor of Economics at the Jawaharlal Nehru University. Mohan Guruswami, he's a distinguished fellow at the Observer Research Foundation and he's also someone who's been deciphering these inflationary figures. We also have with us senior journalist and economic analyst Priyaranjan Dash. He would be helping us with the macroeconomic picture and telling us how the government and the ruling party is viewing these inf inflation inflationary trends and its effects is a GVL Narsema Rao, national spokesperson of the BJP. Thank you all of you for coming in. Uh, so I, I'll start with you, Professor Merotra. Why has inflation gone down by this huge a percentage in terms of just that now people are saying that, wow, inflation is completely under control. Have we been able to tame it? Well, there's been a trend decline for a, for a while. And the single most important factor, of course, is the international crude prices, because crude is a very significant proportion of the total basket of goods which goes into the index. Uh, at the same time, you know, food is about, uh, if I remember correctly, the, in the CPI, it's about half. Mm. It's much less in WPI, but in the CPI, it's, it's nearly half. And it's the CPI which, in a sense, matters to the people most. And uh, uh, obviously, a significant part of that is cereals and MSP, the minimum support prices, have not been raised. And that's been, an, again, a contributing factor. Um, but at the same time, um, there's the third, I think, uh, factor is what can be called a base effect, because if there's been a trend decline, then, you know, there is a, there's a further decline, then it sort of, you know, tends to sort of ha uh, right. have, have that effect. It's, it's a, it's a uh, uh, perception. Uh, so, the, the, so, you know, a combination of these is probably the reason. And clearly, the RBI is, I mean, on the negative side, you know, what could have perhaps right. absolutely worsened the situation. So on the negative side, meaning the RBI has kept a tight leash on monetary so policy, that's another factor which has sus which sustained the decline. All right, so you're saying that that is also one of the factors that has yeah, sustained yeah, that yeah. decline. We'll be coming back to whether the award should be the R or the RBI should be doing in the situation. But Mr. Guruswami, uh, would you agree uh, with Professor Berotra as far as uh, the trends uh, and as far as the factors behind the inflation going down are concerned, or would you like to add a couple no, of factors? There's nothing to agree or disagree. They're facts. Yeah. They're there. In cold print hmm. and you know the data supports that so it is to be accepted but the reality of life is that cereal prices are static because MSP has been kept there oil has declined by by 50 percent so you know that has benefited WPI the reality also is household budgets hmm. food takes up 68 percent of their average Indians budget and in the last one month, prices of vegetables have gone up by 20%. Look at the papers today. They've got detailed breakdowns. Price of tomato, price of potatoes, onions, peas, you know, everything going up. So there is that reality also that the common man, he's getting his, if he's eating ration chawal, fine, ration atta, fine. Mm. But if he's buying open market rice, it's gone up. Mm. Buying open market wheat, it's gone up. Buying vegetables, is all open market, it's gone up. So, you know, he's feeling the pressure. Okay. So, you know, the benefit of stable WPI, zero WPI, stable CPI is not going to be given to the government. The complaint will be still the same. Mm. And this is something, unfortunately, the government can't do very much. All right. There are bigger distortions involved here, mm. which in the short term the government can't attend. But this is exactly the same BJP, Roasted the Congress on price of onions, price of tomatoes, price of potatoes. Now the other side will do the same. There's right. no, there's no, there will not be heat hmm. in the debate, no light. Okay, we'll get the BJP representative in on uh, what you just said. But uh, Mr. Dash, before the program started, we were talking about another factor, and that was the fact that demand somehow ha has also come down, and that was one of the major trends that you believed was controlling inflation. 
Yes, uh, I believe that demand compression is uh, a very strong reason because, uh, uh, you know, to tame inflation, the, uh, you know, tiding over the structural weaknesses of, of the economy would be very important. Mm. You know, whether India has won the battle against inflation will depend whether India has been able to correct the structural weaknesses in the economy which give rise to inflation mm. or whether we are going through a very temporary phase. Let's not forget that after the 2008 financial crisis, in 2009, starting from May, June, you had for almost six months zero inflation like we are having, in fact, negative inflation. Mm. So this phase of de-inflation, to my mind, among the factors which have been already spoken about, they are, they are all true. But the, the, uh, an important factor which is playing is demand compression. Right. That has, of, co of course, taken place because of the RBA action mm. in terms of tight monetary policy. But more than that, I would say that the decline in incomes, particularly in rural areas, when you are talking about MSP having not been raised, mm. is also contributing. One is directly it is contributing to not raising food prices. Right. The other is indirectly it has contributed to keeping rural income stagnant or mm. even rural incomes have declined. Similarly, some of the government spending, mm. which was in rural areas, for instance, you know, be it uh, Narega or all, all such other schemes right. of income transfers or mm. income benefits, which, which was going to the rural area. Okay. That is, so incomes have, have uh, been depressed. Right. As a result, you've had a demand compression, which is, which is getting reflected in this present phase of de-inflation that we are looking at. Exactly like we had in that recessionary phase 2000. of 2000, you know, 2009, Hmm. Following the financial crisis in 2008. All right, uh, Mr. Guruham, you wanted to comment on that. You wanted yeah, to you, the uh, demand compression figures in trend is quite obvious. Hmm. Production, uh, industrial production is down. Hmm. Obviously, when there's less demand, hmm. there will be relief on prices. Hmm. Yeah. So that is a, a, so you can't crow about it. Hmm. If you got growth going on hmm. and you tamed inflation on one side, then it's great. But the growth rate has tumbled by. 0.4% in the second quarter. Right. So, you know, these are things which should worry us rather than, you know, get elated about it. All right. But uh, the BJP uh, president today, Amit Shah, was speaking uh, at a rally and he, of course, said that they've really brought down inflation and inflation is under control. So, we'll ask GVL Narsimha Rao, sir, has the government or your party done enough uh, to say that inflation is tamed? Have we tamed inflation? I think if it's not evident to somebody, I think I'm, I find it rather uh, uh, one on the one hand amusing and also frustrating because uh, all the economists on the panel, I think, are not taking any recourse to statistics and then they are giving tired explanations and facile explanations as to why inflation may have come down. Um, I, I'm, I'm not an economist like many of you are. But I know for sure that fuel inflation, the fuel prices account for only 15% of the total, uh, uh, total basket of WPI. And I'm sure you're aware of it. I think somebody mentioned it's, it has a great effect on this. Mm -hmm. And if you look at, I think I would, all of you, I think I would have, I, because you're economists, I'm hoping that many of you would have had the uh, opportunity to read Surjit Bhalla's paper, which... Uh, which, which kind of uh, refutes all these facile explanations as to why inflation may have come down. Mm. And I think uh, all this is uh, substantiating numbers. And I would like to have it, I would like your experts to throw, on light, throw light on this. It very clearly says we are comparing year-on-year -year basis mm. inflation WPI of November 2014 with WPI of 2013. And the crude oil prices during these two uh, periods have fallen only by some 15% in the international, in dollar terms. But if you look at rupee terms, right. the decline may be completely negligible. Mm. So even if you account for some effect of uh, the crude oil prices, the decline, uh, drastical decline in uh, crude so, oil prices, its impact could not come down from 7.6% to 0%. So you're just saying it's policy? I, I think I would like your experts to really talk right, about let, numbers let, 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 rather than give uh, very... Uh, Let time, the experts uh, kind speak. Of very tested explanations. All right, Mr. Gurusamy. First of all, I don't think you know there's an argument that there's name calling. 
You know, name calling is the easiest thing. If you don't have an argument, you indulge in name calling. Like he's talking to some Congress representative. Because we see these people nightly abusing each other. No, that's not the way to discuss out here. You were talking numbers. We gave yeah. numbers. He gave numbers. He gave numbers. You argue on numbers. Hmm. Don't come and say, you know, you're ignorant, you don't know. I mean, yeah, <coughs> let's you, argue do, do you know more? I know what you are. Do you know more? You know, so, no, but so let's, let's not get into that. The f numbers no, are no. speaking. Second quarter figures. 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 Second quarter figures are showing Can I? that the GDP we'll has come. growth has come down by 0.4%. We also know that oil prices have come from $110 but to $60. Dollars. To last year. Today it was $50. Hmm. There is a bonus to the economy on that. Hmm. We, 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 uh, one has to accept that. Oil, even if it's 20% of the basket, contributes a lot when it comes down by half. Mm. It makes a big difference there. Mm. There is also the, the, the fact that MSP um, for, for wheat and rice has not gone up. Mm. And that is also contributing to this the steadiness in prices. But, you know, where there is an open market system going on, you're talking about fruits and vegetables, where, you know, households are spending more money on that, mm. particularly the middle classes. Prices are going up. But I also gave them an escape hatching that the government can't control that. Mm. But you know, you can't, we can't sit here and honestly and say, oh, it's wonderful, everything is going up, it's beautiful. When the finance minister's growth rate, mm. between 5 to 6 percent, is not going to be met this year. Mm. It's very clear, it's going to be sub 5. So, what are these people talking about here? Yeah? All right, so uh, the, the economists are arguing that not much reason to cheer. I mean, not really f now, as uh, Professor Marotra, would you? No, uh, no, of course, we have reason to cheer. If inflation rates come down, the poor benefit. There's no question about that. And, and there is a sort of expectational spiral built into high inflation rates because mm. it tends to raise demand for, wa for wages. Mm. So, you don't want to be in that spiral situation. Uh, if any, you know, on the, on the, I, I want to sort of take issue with my colleague, Mr. Dash, a little bit, because while it is true that uh, because the growth rate of the economy is down, on the production side, there is lower demand. Right. However, consumer demand is not that dampened. Mm. If anything, if inflation is on a downward trend, you will see a sort of uh, a feeling or perception among the the, the, the people who have additional money to be able to, that they want to spend more. There's another factor that that I would say uh, sort of goes slightly against what uh, uh, Mr. Dash is arguing. You see, wages, the wage rates have been, uh, rural wage rates, mm. have been increasing although at a lower rate. Right. You see, so there might be a sort of connection between the fact that inflation rates are coming down, that wages are not going up again. You know, in the, the, fa the fact of the matter is that, you know, jobs at the bottom of the pyramid have continued to grow. That's mm. what the NSS data clearly showed. Mm. Um, they might not be growing in the organized sector. In the unorganized sector, jobs have continued to grow. Construction employment is still growing. As a result, wages are, are, have continued to grow. People are leaving agriculture to join mm. uh, non-agricultural mm. work. And, and, and why are they leaving agricultural work to join non-agricultural work? Because wages are higher here than they are in rural areas. So for all those reasons, you know, demand is not that compressed. So it's not so much consumer demand compression, mm. which has an impact. Production demand, yes, quite right. That is, that is certainly true. So, you know... Uh, and frankly, I don't know why Mr. Rao would take issue with what we were saying that because as because as, as we were also saying that in, in the short run, the government has been in power after all only for six months. Yes. Many of the reasons why inflation has been high are structural reasons. And in some ways, we are we are in a sense also being critical of the fact that the previous government didn't take enough action. Right. Mm -hmm. On the structural supply constraints, the main factors are structural have those, supply constraints. Have those been addressed? Have those no, been they, how can they be addressed by this government so quickly? They yeah. take time because there are many things. And you see, if suppose food accounts for half of total uh, of the total ba basket, which goes into uh, C CPI, if you're going to increase now, like Mr. Guru Swami was saying, you know fruits and vegetables, we are still not seeing the improvement. How are you going to get the improvement in output and supply of fruits and vegetables unless you do something about 
कोल्ड चेन दिस गवर्नमेंट नीड्स टू एक्ट नाउ बिगिन टू एक्ट क्विकली ऑन कोल्ड चेन सो दैट यू डोंट सी द ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ आउटपुट पेरिशिंग बिटवीन फार्म एंड द मार्केट You don't want that. So these are the structural actions that need to. So take the first, it. first the actions need to be. Uh, That's right. You can't so have cold chain. You have electricity twenty four seven. Yeah. You know, the government doesn't need to go into defensive mode Absolutely, about. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So yeah. it's still early days, Mr. Darshan. We not. Uh, I mean, we, we of course uh, say the government has been doing a lot, Mr. Darshan. Would the, would you say no, that the government no, has no, been? No, I think. Yeah, I'll, I'll just come back to you, Mr. Rao, uh, Mr. Dash. Would you want to come in as no, far as I, no, the no, government the and that, how it's been handling? The point I was trying to make. Okay, go ahead. Okay, okay. Okay, go ahead. I'll I'll come later. Okay. Okay, so Mr. Dash, because I'll come back to you, Mr. Narsimha, Rao, Rao, because the other thing about the the government and the fact uh, the inflation uh, is uh, the interest rate that the finance minister Arun Jaitley has spoken about quite a few times. I mean, Mr. Jayant Sinha, the Minister of State, today clarified that the RBI and the Finmen are on the same page, but uh, the, the constant calls for a, a rate cut for higher growth push uh, growth bigger through a rate cut. Mr. Dash, would you agree that that time has come that we have inflation that much under control? well the inflation is under control mm -hmm. so that is there is no denying it in fact uh, it is heading to a, a negative kind of a situation and as as we've already discussed there are several factors which is driving down this inflation uh, downwards now the question that uh, that we should be addressing ourselves and which uh, mr nasimar are trying to trying to suggest but is not very clear about it is that whether government policies are responsible mm. deliberate government anti inflationary policies whether they are yielding results by my point is simple and it's already been mentioned that you know it's too early for the government actually to have worked on structural weaknesses of the economy which give rise to inflation in the first place right but if you look at what the government has done early into office in in june soon after it came since inflation control was one of its priority agenda the they uh, got all the uh, ministers from the states uh, you know civil supplies food ministers into a conference to to uh, collectively think about what to do about inflation and if you look at the list of uh, measures that was decided in that meeting for instance and whether you then you now look back to see whether those measures have actually worked mm. to bring down inflation to such levels uh, that's not true because right. you know de hoarding and stuff like that uh, haven't happened and some of the other suggestions which had been made about amending certain acts and things they those have not been brought about and the the, the more longer term uh, measures which had been suggested in terms of increasing production and stuff and including cold storage and things like that haven't happened right. you all with due and, respect to the finance minister you can't hoard tomatoes and peas and perishable vegetables so, here <laughs> yes so so them. so those things haven't happened and mm. so that is you know it is it is a situation to my mind more akin to the 2009 you know uh, summer situation right. where like you had you know there also if you looked at it august 2 2008 right. international oil prices touched 146 dollars a barrel and it it crashed to to almost 70 dollars right following this financial crisis and the recessionary trend that was being seen all over the world mm. and it was a similar kind of a situation but then soon we had to come back with inflation mm. and we've had very bad inflation for the last 4 years all right so this kind of a phase that is all i am trying to say is a, is a temporary thing that is happening because of a combination of lot of factors including demand compression that we are seeing right all right so it's a temporary thing and I, that would be the big takeaway for me perhaps but mr jeevel nasimarao you wanted to come in a, a lot, lot earlier we'll come to you right now and we're absolutely run out of time so we'll give you the final comments right now and then we'll take the final comments from the experts here as well ah uh, ah uh, yeah i think uh, uh, as 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 the whole country knows inflation anti inflationary measures and fighting bringing down the consumer inflation was the single most important promise that the bjp had made and initial first couple of months the entire focus of the government and all entire focus of the prime minister was on on controlling on bringing down the inflation the kind of minimum export prices that had been fixed for different uh, commodities to ensure that people did not export when there was going to be a shortage nationally 
and the kind of anti the kind of uh, dehoding measures that were taken and the manner in which throughout the government communicated to the people of the country that we want to bring down inflation talking down inflation is itself an important part of a governmental activity and the monetary policy i think a combination of this to my mind has certainly contributed to a big cut in inflation levels certainly and i think for uh, fallen oil prices uh, has contributed to some extent all right and, and would, also very quickly would, really uh, would you push for an uh, rbi uh, rate cut i mean a lot of, lot of the leaders in your party have been saying the that the mr raghuram rajan should cut and and, and, and the same experts the same experts would have really pinned us down had the inflation gone up 2% for the same reasons for you are mentioning no, you don't i assume it, things this is nonsensical yeah for, i i am not really brushing them with any political political connotation no, 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 let's not, not go, let's not go there let's not go there this is very simple question final that. question but mr narsimha rao but then the same analysts the same experts would have really F final the question to you sir final question to you really, would you uh, would the bjp still the press government. for mr raghuram ram rajan to come now. out with his next i think you have you cannot have double standards all right would you please, uh, just a simple question would you want mr raghuram rajan in his next credit policy to cut interest rates as your party has been suggesting now that inflation has been tamed and then i'll get an opinion from the experts on the same mr rao okay um, i think uh, this is a decision that the rbi this is a decision that is in the domain of the rbi all right and uh, uh, the finance minister had made these statements in the past so i don't think i would like to make a comment which is independent obviously the finance minister decides makes the governmental intentions known but right. the final decision will be taken by the rbi all right so fine same question to you i mean the government has been putting a lot of pressure do you think the rbi should now come out and cut rate <coughs> Well, I think there are limits to how much they can cut because you see, your 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 the uh, the banks borrow at high, very high rates, hmm. nine to nine and a half percent, and the banks, eighty percent of banking is in the public sector. Hmm. They are extremely inefficient. Hmm. They operate on a six percent, seven percent spread. They got huge bad debts, hmm. which they can't realize. So no, all these piles are suddenly, all over the world, banks operate on a two percent spread. So how much are you going to cut? Hmm. So you know I. And even in India, all pensioners have got fixed deposit in bank because they don't put it in the stock market. Okay, so they're going to be a howl from there. So there are all practical difficulties out here. There's a political economy which has to take everybody into account. Mm. And the same people who say bank cut, then will say, you know, no, you can't cut down pensioners mm. because you know, 25 or 35 million people depend on fixed deposits. Right. So uh, lots of things are involved here. I think one has to leave it to the RBI, their specialist agency. He will do it at the right time. He's an experienced economist, well-known economist, a lot of international experience. He'll do what is right for the country. All right, well, Mr. Dash. Final word as far as the autonomy of the RBI is that under question with the government putting pressure, or is it the norm over here in India with all these independent so, institutions? I, I'm sorry, RBI uh, in this country is not independent. <laughs> period. It is not U.S. Federal Reserve. So let's yeah. make no mistake. Hmm. RBI governor. has to take orders not only from the finance minister mm. but from the department of economic affairs secretary right. so that is the practical situation that we know mm. in this country so let's not talk about that now the actual thing is why uh, you know rbi governor himself has explained mm. in the last policy pronouncement why he is uh, not in a position to Uh, cut rates right. although there has been a precipitated fall in inflation hmm. and rbi has been targeting you know the cpi of 6% right. that is that is that seems already achievable now so what is it that holding him back hmm. he said what is holding him back is this uncertainty about the government's fiscal situation okay which is which is you know you ought to have a certain synergy between the monetary policy that is the domain of reserve bank of india hmm. and the fiscal policy that the government pursues the fiscal situation has to be corrected first for the rbi to move all right in the in the direction that it would like to so the communication has to happen at that level of the of by synergizing the two policies yeah the fiscal it is, it is not what you make public pronouncement you know i would be interested to bring down rbi brings down rate and the rbi says that well i am unable right, to do so it perhaps, it's not a question of so that it's not i mean perhaps it's better not to look at it that simplistically and not in terms of yes inflation has gone well, down and we are doing really well target well behind target yeah, yeah. so i mean, a lot of things Can to make 
Two, two absolutely run out very, of time. Uh, no time at all. No time at all. Five seconds, possibly, if you. Well, one thing is that uh, it's a pos there's a possibility that the governor may not actually reduce rates, precisely because uh, the Federal Reserve has announced mm. that they will start tapering. In other words, they'll start raising rates. So, in other words, if we reduce rates and they reduce, they actually sort of raise rates. That's a bit of a. A, a, a problem. If on the other hand, we were to sort of, if right. they were keeping their rates low and we, we were sort of reducing, that might have been poss possible. Right. But in a situation where they actually raise rates, it will become very difficult, perhaps become very difficult for the governor to actually All right, so we'll reduce have to our rates. Wait and see what Governor Raghuram Rajan does about uh, the uh, rate cuts. But thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming and sharing your perspective. And also, Mr. Jeevan Narsimara, thanks very much and sharing your perspective on this uh, subject. So that's our little presentation on the big picture about inflation. What do you think about us? About it? Do tell us. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.